How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about some of the best VPNs for Angola in Africa. Uh, now, before we begin, if you guys are interested in any of the VPNs mentioned today, be it Express, Nord, or Surfshark, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn more about these VPNs. Okay, now if you're going to visit Angola, the first reason to connect to a VPN is to protect your privacy. According to a report by the website freedomhouse.org, right here, as you can tell, it is listed as not free. Angola is listed as not free. While their internet freedom is listed as partly free, that said, you are likely to be monitored if you post something that is not liked. If you connect to a VPN, you can create a layer of encryption that will make it much tougher for people to pin you down. Now, the next reason to connect to a VPN while in Angola has to do with censorship. It should come as no surprise that certain things are banned in the country. And if you want to be able to access some material while you're there, you need to connect to a VPN in a different country. Uh, what that'll do is make the blocking software think you are someplace else. That way, you can access the content you wish to see. So, of course, I picked these three VPNs because they are able to bypass such censorship and they all have fast servers that perform well while in the area, high levels of military grade, uh, strong encryption to protect you from cyber crooks and the Angolan government uh, providers with a no locks policy. These are all no locks policy VPNs. All these VPNs, of course, have a strict no locks policy and they have good records when it comes to upholding their uh, privacy policy. They also have the ability to get around your restrictions, obviously, and of course, enough network stability to lessen the number of disconnects and support, including 24 seven live chat support and whatnot. Uh, of course, all these VPNs are some of the best VPNs you can find on the market, especially if you're trying to bypass censorship. Okay, so how do you know which one of these VPNs could be the best choice for you? Well, it depends on what you're looking for out of the VPN. Now, ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 94 countries and will allow you to secure up to five devices per subscription. ExpressVPN has basic features such as uh, the internet kill switch, uh, which is called network lock in Express and split tunneling. Now, if you're not familiar with these, the kill switch will make sure that you're only connected to the internet when you're secured by the VPN. So if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly, it will also disconnect your internet connection, making sure that you don't connect back to the ISP servers, making sure that you don't connect back to your internet service providers servers and only be connected through the uh, VPN secured servers. Now, split tiling will allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN in which are not. Uh, so you could only have, for example, your torrenting client routed through the VPN while the rest of your network is left intact or untouched by the VPN connection. Uh, or the other way around, where you could have uh, select applications uh, bypass uh, the VPN connection while the rest of your network is secured by the VPN. Okay, so let's say you're looking for a VPN that is a little bit more budget friendly, and that would be NordVPN with over 5,100 servers in 60 countries. Now, even though NordVPN has 34 less countries than ExpressVPN, as you can tell, it is still quite the number at 60 countries. You'll be able to secure up to six devices per subscription though, and a whole bunch of security features such as specialty servers, as you can tell here with a dedicated IP, double VPN, onion over VPN, and peer to peer. And of course, you've got an ad blocker right here. Uh, and the very quick and best performing protocol, Nord Links. Uh, keep in mind when you switch to Nord Links, you will lose access to double VPN and dedicated IP. And unless you need these specific specialty servers, I would just recommend that you stick to Nord Links, which is a very quick protocol. Uh, in fact, so quick that you don't want to use anything else. Not only do you get the conventional kill switch, but you also get the app kill switch, which will close selected apps when you disconnect from the VPN or the connection drops, rather than disconnecting your entire connection as it is with the conventional kill switch, split tunneling. You've got also custom DNS, which is an easy way to change your DNS and obfuscated servers if you're in a censorship heavy country. Now, if you're looking for the most budget friendly VPN, that would be Surfshark. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 65 countries, which makes it a very convenient option uh, for those wanting to secure a whole bunch of 
uh, devices with just one subscription because it will allow you to virtually secure an unlimited number of devices with just one subscription. And it being such a budget-friendly VPN without necessarily sacrificing much on security, performance, or features for that matter, makes it a very enticing VPN for most people, especially those that don't want to spend a whole lot, at least on their first VPN experience. So uh, you still get multi-hop and static IP, which are the same as double VPN and dedicated IP from NordVPN. And if you don't know what these are, by the way, static IP will give you, well, static IP addresses, which means that these servers have IPs that are set and do not change. Multi-hop will route your connection through two servers, as you can tell, uh, rather than one for double the protection, making it extra difficult to track you. And in these settings here, you will notice that uh, we still get whitelister, which is split tunneling. It's just called whitelister here. The kill switch, an ad blocker, as well as a handful of protocols. Um, for the most part, you just wanna use the best performing protocol. Again, that'll be the WireGuard protocol. It's so quick that you don't wanna use anything else. Um, you've got IKEV2, which is a good protocol. It's pretty quick. Extra security will be offered by OpenVPN, both UDP and TCP, and ShadowSox will help you reach banned websites if you're in a censorship-heavy country, though it will only secure your browser traffic, so keep that in mind. And No Borders mode will help you bypass the Great Firewall of China if you are in China or any other censorship-heavy country for that matter. Uh, and, you know, if you notice that ExpressVPN doesn't really have any obfuscated kind of uh, options here for obfuscation and whatnot, that's because ExpressVPN actually has obfuscation on by default. It's always on and you don't have to go through any sort of configuration or toggle any kind of option uh, in order to turn it on. All you have to do is download it and it will work whether you're in China, outside of China, in any other censorship heavy country, it doesn't matter. That's of course part of the ease of use with ExpressVPN. So that'll be it for this video guys. Keep in mind that all these VPNs are covered by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So no matter which VPN you decide to go for, you'll be able to claim the refund. Let me just show you guys very quickly. So if I go ahead and get ExpressVPN, you'll notice that all these VPNs, it says there are 30-day money-back guarantees on them. So uh, even if you just go for the one-month plan, you will be able to claim the refund through the 24-7 live chat support. By the way, it's the same with NordVPN and Surfshark. All you need to do is hover over the bottom right and you'll be able to access the live chat support, the 24-7 live chat support where they will help you with your refund or any other question you might be having about uh, these VPNs. Uh, again, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below for all of these VPNs. And you'll also find full reviews that'll give you more of an in-depth look into the privacy policy, speed streaming, torrenting capabilities, as well as security and features. So be sure to check those out if you guys are interested. That'll be it for this video. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.